All right, should you use Drizzle for your project? Um, I'm gonna give you the long answer and I'll also give you the short answer. So hopefully you can make your mind up. And uh, the short answer is yes, but the long answer is yes. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna explain kind of why I chose to move over to Drizzle. Previously, I had been using Superbase and their SDK. So what we can see here is this is how Superbase kind of works. Um, you put in your URL and your key and then you can create your uh, API key and then you can create a client and you're able to pass in your database schema. So this is kind of the TypeScript support that you get with Superbase and I'll just show you that. So if we go, shit dude, wait, I think, um, file explorer, okay, there we go. So I have an archive and I believe we have our database here. So. This is what your um, types looks like. Basically, all you have to do is um, superbase gen type, something you use the superbase CLI, and it spits out a schema file just like this. And so you can see every single table in your company, in your database, and you can see you get kind of relations and stuff on that. And this is actually not that kind of dense of a file. It, it's, it looks pretty manageable, but it does kind of lead to some, mm, I don't know, lacking, I guess, uh, <laughs> lacking uh, TypeScript support. My bad, dude. Um, so, if we come back to that file that we were just on. Basically, what you do is you create your Superbase client, and then you can select from tables. And it's really interesting. This is how you set up a, a foreign key, kind of, I, I forget, like a left join, I think, in um, SQL. So, you can tell I barely know what I'm talking about with SQL and, and I still think you should use Drizzle. So we'll get back to Drizzle in a second, but I just want to show you, this is how it works. So we have um, from our table, so we select a table and then we do, we select location ID from location data, so that table. And then from location access, which um, has a foreign key to location data, we're selecting app key and access token. So this is gonna be an array because location access references location data and not the other way around. So basically um, we're pulling that out using that foreign key. And this is kind of a weird query because we're like kind of interpolating it. But what you would do to get a normal kind of query is you would go const data and then you can label it. You could say location data comma error and then location error, uh, okay, equals await superbase, and then you could just run, set up the query that way. And the way this works, and the way I've been writing superbase recently, is if location, well, I guess this has to be in parentheses, if location error, throw location error. And I believe I believe that if you don't pull this out from the object, it's not going to throw an error. So you just won't have any data and you won't know what the error is, which is kind of, I mean, I don't know, maybe you could write, modify the client or something so that it just throws this error instead of returning it um, and letting you handle it. But I actually prefer if it would just throw an error because most of my CRUD operations are kind of important. And if they're not, I'll just wrap them in try catch or something. Um, but that's kind of how it works. And then the type checking was not that good. I would write like entire queries or entire documents of not documents, but functions with multiple queries. And I could see shit that was fucked up. Like I knew it wasn't going to work. And then I restarted TypeScript. If you don't know, whenever TypeScript's acting up, because it fucking loves to do that, you just do basically just type in TS and then TypeScript would start TS server. And it'll um, reanalyze everything. And so basically it was just not, it was just not fucking picking up on, on problems with my, with my queries, which is a huge, a huge issue, right? Uh, but I'll show you how it works now with Drizzle. So first off, this is our Drizzle schema. And um, I'm not gonna talk too much about how to get Drizzle set up. I have a video about that. Actually, I exposed an environment variable and got fucking hacked by some asshole. Um, 
but it's fine. So anyways, um, this is what your schema looks like in Drizzle. And um, you can see there's a lot more, it, I don't know, it just looks a lot more intense. Plus we have a separate relations file. Looks more a lot, lot more intense, you know, that's my kind of technical term for this. A lot more intense, but it does look like it kind of has more data here than in the Superbase um, types file. And I believe this is what part of what gets you better type checking, as well as the um, syntax highlighting. Because, um, well, first of all, so this is basically how you're going to set up Drizzle. So I have an index.ts in my database directory. They call this DB in their documentation, but I don't like that. Um, so basically, I'm using Neon. I'm importing uh, the client for that. And then the schema. So everything from the schema as DB. And then I can create a Drizzle client with type of DB. And I'm exporting that DB. So whenever I need to use the DB, I can just import it from there. And then I have separate clients for my two environments. So my one environment is trigger.dev, which is kind of a background jobs framework. And then my front end environment is Vercel and Next.js. So this one uses process.env to get the environment variable, and this one uses nvars.retrieve, which is an asynchronous task. So with Vercel, um, we're using a WebSocket constructor for Neon because apparently it wants that. I don't really understand. I'm not going to lie. Um, but basically all we're doing is we're exporting that database object again. I actually don't think I need it in my index, but fuck it, dude. Um, and then... We're importing Drizzle as client, and I'm exporting my Drizzle client. So I have the client as SQL, which is wrapped around this NVAR, and then the schema, and then the logger. Um, and then in terms of trigger, it's basically the same thing, but it's a function. So whenever I want to create a new um, client, I just do I just do that. So, and obviously it should be spelled right, but yeah, you just create a client called Drizzle and it just gives you this. So when we come back to one of our tasks, basically, this is how it works in, in Drizzle. And it's it's really fucking nice. So as you saw with Superbase, it was all basically a string. And you could interpolate values into that string. But with this, we have very nice, I guess, syntax highlighting. It's actually like TypeScript and shit. It's fucking... I sound retarded, but it's, it's nice. Um... So whenever we want to do an operation, I can just await drizzle. I don't have to do like const error equals that because I know that if this throws an error, it, if this, if there is an error here, it'll throw an error. So it'll just stop my function and I can fix the error. Um, we're inserting onto app customers, this table, we're inserting these values for customer ID and install type. And then we're manually saying on conflict, do nothing. So with, with Superbase, you couldn't really specify this you would basically do an upsert and then i mean i suppose you could do an insert and an upsert but with this you can specifically update certain values um so we're just doing on conflict do nothing because all we're upserting is the primary keys and then here's an example of an upsert so on conflict do update so we have a target which is the primary key or like i guess it could be a array of of um, different columns to target and then we're setting these values right and then here's another example with a bunch more data I don't know if this is the best way to do it because I'm duplicating a lot of these you know values but um, uh, yeah I mean I don't know I don't I guess I don't have a whole lot to say but I do fucking love drizzle um, especially since I switched to neon now I was using Superbase, and it's kind of a good retention tactic. Like, I had never used databases in my code, um, and Superbase makes it really easy. They just they go, yeah, just npm i Superbase JS, and then you can make this query and you can get your data. And I think Superbase is great for getting started, but I don't know. Once you once you kind of start to grow, you want more features from kind of your database. But then you want like more features from auth and a little bit more configuration. And I just feel like Superbase kind of is the jack of all trades, master of none in some ways. And I don't know, I feel better about Neon. Um, so when you switch off of the Superbase JS, then you're able to use Neon um, because all you do is change out the drivers and 
the uh, environment variables and you're good to go. So, um, yeah, I think Drizzle is amazing. You know, obviously, if, if Neon shit the bed and there was something cooler and, you know, I wanted to waste my time, I could switch easily because I'm using Drizzle. And um, I really do think it's like, I don't know, it, it feels like one of those things where you try it and you're just like, why why isn't everything done this way? This is so this is so good. Because it doesn't feel like I'm losing anything to abstraction. It doesn't feel like, you know, there's a compromise. Like who came up with an ORM like Prisma where we're wrapping all these queries in different layers and doing multiple queries? Like, why not just create fucking TypeScript a, a way to write SQL in TypeScript? I mean, that's basically what Drizzle is. And, um, yeah, it's fucking brilliant. So, anyways, that's the video. Hope you try out Drizzle and enjoy it. And, if you're still watching and you are the person... Select where... <laughs> Look at this is how you would do it. Await drizzle dot... Um, select... From... DB dot viewers... Where... And then we'll wrap this in an and... And then what we can do is we can put two different equal statements. So we can put equal, equal, and if I press save, basically what I want to show you is that we can do and, so we can have two equal statements, and this is like a really kind of nice way of, of putting together your logic, you know? Um, it's very easily easy to like understand at a glance. So equals viewers dot uh still watching true and then we'll do viewers dot hacked me yesterday false no true well how about this dot set um fuck you false so if you're still watching, and if you hacked me yesterday, if you did not hack me yesterday, then I do not fuck you. Fuck you is false. However, if you did hack me yesterday, then fuck you, alright? Fuck your mother, dude. <laughs> alright, anyways, that's the video. Thanks for watching.